In this video, we're going to learn about waves. We're going to learn the two different types of waves. We'll learn how to describe the different parts of a wave. And then finally, we're going to learn the difference between the period and the frequency of a wave. So let's start with those two different types of waves. Here they are. We have transverse waves and we have longitudinal waves. Uh, we're going to describe these waves in terms of mechanical waves. So that is waves that travel through a physical medium, like a rope or water or something like that. So transverse waves are probably what you would normally picture in your mind when you picture a wave. That's going to be the thing that goes up and down just like that. So there's our transverse wave. And the particles within the medium, let's just say this red line is representing a rope. We're just to look at a single part of that uh, rope, maybe just a single molecule, what would happen is this wave was moving across here, uh, the page, this particle would just kind of move up and down, up and down, just like that. And so we could say that the particle would be moving in a direction that is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. The wave would be moving uh, left and right as it would move across the page, whereas the particle would be moving up and down. Longitudinal waves are a little bit uh, harder to visualize. Um, this is actually the way that sound travels through the air. Tr sound travels using a longitudinal wave. And what happens is that uh, it's kind of like a coil, like a coil slinky toy, that if we took one of those slinkies and we were to kind of just pinch in a section and release it. So we just had that slinky and then maybe this middle section, we just kind of pinched it all together and then we were to let go of that pinched region there, it would kind of start spreading out within the coil spring and moving throughout the coil. It's kind of hard to visualize, but if you have a spring toy, um, you could try it by pinching it in and just releasing it and see how that wave kind of moves back and forth. So in this example with a longitudinal wave, uh, we're going to have the medium, the particles within the medium, are going to be moving in the same direction as the wave. So if we could kind of picture a particle just kind of trapped in here, it would just be moving back and forth, back and forth, as this pulse was just to move throughout the wave back and forth. So particle and motion would be parallel to each other. So let's focus in on that transverse wave so we can talk a little bit about the anatomy uh, of a wave. So first, the top of a wave we call a crest, and the bottom of a wave we call a trough. And amplitude is going to be the maximum distance from equilibrium. And so the very center of uh, a crest in a trough, this line right here, would be equilibrium position. And so we have a amplitude represented right here, distance from equilibrium to the top of the crest, and amplitude is also represented right here. The wavelength is a distance from a crest to a crest, or a trough to a trough, so both of those will be the exact same distance, and uh, the wavelength is a unique segment of a wave before the wave is going to begin repeating itself again. Uh, so we don't usually focus on a single point of a wave. Uh, rather, it's most common to measure waves in terms of wavelengths. And we use the Greek letter lambda to uh, symbolize wavelength. All right, finally, let's look at the difference between a period of a wave and a frequency. So the period of a wave is the amount of time it takes for one wavelength to pass through a point, or in other words, the length of time to complete one cycle. And we measure periods uh, in seconds. Frequency, on the other hand, is the number of cycles that could be completed within one second. And we measure frequency uh, in units of hertz. And when we're saying cycle, we're just talking about one wavelength. Now, if we wanted to find the frequency, we can use an equation that looks like this. Frequency is equal to the inverse of the period. So we take one divided by the period, and this is where these units come from. Hertz actually stands for one over second, or sometimes you see it written as second to the minus one. And then finally, we can find the wavelength if we know the frequency by using this equation we like to call the wave equation. Uh, it works like this. The speed of a wave, or velocity of the wave, 
divided by the frequency of the wave is going to be equal to the wavelength. In the next video, we'll learn how to use this wave equation to solve problems. And that is a wave.